As many of you know today, at 2.45, I'm going to join Vice President uh, Biden and other mayors in a Google Hangout to talk about gun violence. Our conversation will take place as the U.S. Uh, Senate prepares to vote on amendments that could either strengthen or derail the federal gun legislation, gun control legislation that is, has been proposed. It's absolutely critical that the Republican amendments are defeated. To that end, my colleagues and I will talk about the important, meaningful federal legislation. Uh, this is going to be important for all American cities. Over the past decade, Baltimore has seen significant decline in violent crime, but violent crime remains persistent in too many of our communities. Through the Great Recession, despite deep budget deficits, uh, we made public safety a priority. No, public, uh, no police officer positions were cut, and we invested in effective technology to further reduce crime. But we're still struggling to find ways to take illegal guns off the streets. Uh, we know the guns are not coming uh, from here. Baltimore has one gun um, shop, one gun store. The rest come from up and down I-95. Uh, this year, the Maryland General Assembly passed a historic gun legislation package which will make our city and our state safer, but our gun laws are only as good as those of our neighbors. Uh, that's why we need the federal government to pass legislation to increase background checks, to ban military-style assault weapons, and to crack down on the sale and distribution of guns to criminals. We need the Senate to take action now. The President, like most Americans, believes the Second Amendment guarantees the ind an individual the right to bear arms. And like most Americans, he also believes that that, uh, that right comes with the responsibility to take all reasonable steps that we can to ensure that guns are safely used and that they don't fall uh, into the wrong hands. The President has said repeatedly, while there is no law or set of laws that can prevent every senseless act of violence completely, if there is even one thing that we can do to reduce this violence, if even one life can be saved, we have an obligation to try. I agree with the President, and he's put forward a specific plan based on those recommendations to protect our children in our communities by reducing gun violence. He announced 23 executive actions as part of uh, his plan to reduce violence. But those executive actions can't replace legislative action on Capitol Hill. The American people have made it clear that it is time to do something. And over the past few weeks, senators in Washington have listened and have taken some big steps forward. Today, we hope they can come together in support of meaningful legislation, and right now, I think we have a real opportunity, a real chance, uh, if they do so, to reduce gun violence in America and make our city uh, safer. So thank you very much. I want to thank Councilman Curran for being here um, today. And I have time for a few questions. I mean, the speed camera is going to shut down. Uh, do you still have confidence in the system? And what do you say to people who question the, the ability of the system to be accurate and fair? So what we know is every day people are speeding. They're speeding on the streets, they're speeding near our schools, and they're endangering our kids. We also know that speed cameras reduce speeding in uh, school zones. But we need to make sure, as I've said repeatedly, that the cameras are accurate all the time. Last fall, we created a task force to, and uh, chose a new vendor to operate the system. And we did so with those goals in mind, to reduce, uh, to reduce speeding and to make sure we get it right. The Department of Transportation in the, in the uh, transition and the implementation uh, with this new vendor discovered clerical mistakes. As a result, they suspended the uh, program on Monday. I think it's the right decision. I would expect nothing less from them. I promise we would get this right, and it is the Department of Transportation's obligation as the uh, agency that's overseeing that to make sure that, that, that we get it right. If they see something wrong, um, you know, today, yesterday, or in the future, I expect them to make uh, the uh, correct action that, um, that would generate support, not just support, but trust in the system, that we're not going to stand by knowing that there was a mistake. Now, I don't think 
uh, it's in anybody's interest, and certainly not uh, the interest of our children who are trying to re remain safe, to have a system that, uh, that has errors in it. So we'll continue to uh, be vigilant. We know and we've seen that uh, crime cameras are an effective tool. Uh, but we also know that in order for them to be effective uh, over the long run, in order for there to continue to be support for this greater goal of keeping our kids safe, it has to be accurate and we have to get it right. Um, the, no city, uh, no city anywhere has the resources to put police officers in every place that we know uh, uh, cars or people are speeding near school zones. And because of that, technology has to step in. Uh, we need technology that can be an effective tool um, you know, over the long haul so we can ensure that we protect kids. I'm going to continue to put pressure on the Department of Transportation to improve the program and to get it right. Uh, because at the end of the day, while this may seem uh, like, uh, you know, sometimes I think this story gets small. Um, it almost seems like a gotcha. Um, but, you know, I'm not afraid of making mistakes. I'm afraid if we don't correct them. And right now, it's about correcting mis mistakes because the, the lives of our kids, the safety of our kids are too important. Under the new cameras, do you know how many invalid tickets have been issued that, that the city believes are invalid? I don't know the number, and I'm not going to have time for a whole lot of questions because I'm meeting with uh, DOT right after this. Okay. Um, and then get to the bottom the, of that. Um, the uh, police consultant, mm -hmm. Scott, Zach, Brandon, Scott, the councilman, has raised concerns about uh, various issues with that contract, including that it's going to the highest bidder. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to get your thoughts about the matter. You know, I have a lot of respect for Councilman Scott. He cares deeply about um, the communities and the safety of the, the citizens in his district and throughout the, uh, the city. I certainly respect his position as vice chair of the uh, city council's uh, public safety committee. And I look forward to working with him and any member of the council uh, as we talk about ways that we can continue to make the city safer. You know, I, I um, want to I have confidence uh, that Commissioner Batts uh, can uh, lead the department and create a safer city. I also know that in order for him to do that, uh, sometimes he needs tools that aren't within the department. And I would like him to have the flexibility uh, and the autonomy to seek those skills, that he, the, not the skills, but the resources that uh, he believes that he needs to create uh, a safer city. But how about the, the fact that it, it, there are lower bids coming in? I don't believe that um, the, the nature of the uh, contract, the consultant's contract, is the type that where the, the lowest bid is automatically the one that um, you should go to. This is about making sure that we get it right, um, not necessarily making sure that we save a, a, a few bucks on this end. Are you okay? Go for that. Um, regarding the red line, there's been some um, criticism and questions about the alignment of the red line on Boston Street. Those questions have been um, um, brought to your attention by Senator Ferguson, I believe. There's also been talk about uh, a subway, a streetcar network in place of the eastern alignment along Boston Street. What are your thoughts on the red line and the, the specifically the Boston Street um, corridor? I, I forgot to say one thing in response to uh, Luke's question. That was an independent panel that reviewed all the, the consultant uh, contracts and uh, chose uh, the vendor, that the consultant that we're going with. And the state, um, because of the importance of public safety in, in Baltimore and because we've had a, a great partnership with the state, they are looking to pick the, uh, some of that cost up or a lot of that cost up. So those are the factors that are also considered in, in weighing uh, which way to go with the panel. and. You know, I, um, it, it, it's very important uh, that we move uh, forward when it comes to mass transportation in the city. Sometimes when I take a look at uh, cities that have been able to grow and to prosper, um, you take a look at their transportation infrastructure. And vibrant cities have a vibrant uh, mass transportation. A lot of them have incredible subway systems. Sometimes they have a, a trolley system, but they have something. Uh, and they certainly have more than what we have in Baltimore. Um, I sometimes, as I, as I look at what we have today and think about, um, you know, you always hindsight is 2020, what could have been possible. 
I wish you know that you can go back in time and say we need more transportation. You know, as you're doing this, we should also consider these things so we would be in a position to grow. I don't want to be in that position, the city to be in that position 30 years from now when we have a, an opportunity to do something that will help the city to grow, to help the region to grow, that we let it get bogged down um, in um, disputes uh, that, that we don't do anything. So I'm determined uh, to, be, uh, as, uh, to be supportive uh, of the red line, to continue to, to uh, be in dialogue with the impacted communities, but to also understand uh, that there's no guarantee if the red line uh, as it stands is derailed that this project, this, this uh, next alternative will happen. And I just feel like that's, that, has, that sort of thing is what has prevented us from having the type of uh, transportation system that I think this city and the region uh, deserves. Uh, so uh, let me, you, you haven't had a chance to ask a question unless you want to defer to yeah, your colleague. I, I would like to ask about the $107 million tip request mm -hmm. that's on your desk right now for the uh, Harbor Point. Not on my desk yet. Okay. Well, it's heading your way from mm -hmm. the DC. So could you talk a little bit about that and, um, you know, will you support that? And also, is there a need for that much money for the, for the city right now? So I think the, uh, what do you mean? Need for need for well, the I mean, for the TIF or for are you saying that I should just ask you know just take the one point seven million dollars? Um, no. No. I mean, so what are you asking me? I I'm don't asking understand. about will you support the TIF request? So, right. And so is there a need when you have the developer you know wealthy developers and also wealthy corporations that are developing down there to ask for such a break? Mm -hmm. So despite the, the, the perceived wealth of a developer or the company, the, the project itself has to be profitable and the numbers have to work. Uh, we have the possibility of uh, creating, uh, creating jobs and to keep a major, con a major corporation uh, in the city of Baltimore with this project. And I'm depending on the, uh, the work of the, the BDC and its board to uh, do the analysis and the, the finance committee to do analysis of the what for test and to see if uh, this project, um, you know, but for this uh, TIF, would this project be able to go forward? And, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking to take, to, to hear their decision. I haven't received that yet and to evaluate it uh, so I can uh, make the decision to move forward. It's an imp important project for the city of Baltimore. It's important for that part of the city which is providing jobs, which is growing, to continue to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.